Good morning and welcome to the Woodlands Township and Baker Hughes. My name is Nelda Blair. I'm chairman of the Woodlands Township and I can't tell you how excited we are to have this gathering this morning, not only in the state of Texas and all of the Southwest, but particularly right here in the Woodlands. I'd like to introduce a couple of folks for us uh, because we have some great dignitaries here today. Of course, everyone here is, is vastly important and we, we welcome all of you. But there are a couple in particular that I'd like to uh, introduce. I'd like to recognize, first of all, some of my uh, fellow Woodlands folks are here today, community leaders, in particular the president of the Woodlands Township, the man who actually leads us, and that's Don Norrell. Don, thank you for being here. And the person most responsible for uh, the group that heads our economic development, the Economic Development Partnership, Mr. Gil Staley, is here. And also Jim Pepe, from the, he's a senior regional manager with the National Association of Manufacturers, is here. And I'd like to mention a couple of folks from Baker Hughes before uh, we actually get to the real heart of the matter, and that's our leaders. Uh, but a couple of folks that are here this morning, and by the way, there were several on this tour that were absolute rock stars, wouldn't you say? Yeah, give them a hand. They did a great job. I want to know how many times they rehearsed before they actually took up the mic. But uh, this morning we have Greg, Fol Greg Folks, who's a Vice President, WH Supply Chain. Greg, would you stand and be recognized? Thank you. Alan Sinor, who's Vice President of Drillbit Systems. And of course, the Director of Manufacturing, who's actually now the new Director of Tours, Wally, Wally, I mean, Wally Adams. Wally, where'd you go? Great job. <laughs> I'd like to ask uh, for a couple of very important people to us to make uh, some comments. Uh, the first one, of course, is uh, the president, CEO, and chairman of Baker Hughes. Now, he originated in Wyoming, but I want you to know he got to Texas as fast as he could. And the reason is, uh, being the petroleum engineer with the background that he has, Texas was the only place to be, as you can well imagine. And he certainly made his mark since he's been here, not only with Baker Hughes, but in the community as well. Everything from junior achievement to the Greater Houston Partnership. The CEO, Chairman, and President of Baker Hughes, Chad Deaton. Thank you. Well, thank you uh, very much, Nelda. I'm actually a geologist, but uh, no petroleum engineering in my background. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody today to the Woodlands. Uh, I'd especially like to uh, thank and welcome Congressman Brady, State Senator Williams, as well as the Woodlands business community and, of course, the media that's uh, here today as well. We're obviously very pleased to be able to announce uh, this new expansion of this plant and the creation of uh, some new jobs uh, in this particular area of the Houston community. I think if you'd had a chance, if you looked around a little bit to see the display and some of the things that we have out here, you'll see that Baker Hughes has been manufacturing bits uh, here in Texas for 100 years now. And it was uh, Howard Hughes Sr. who came and first started the first bit back in uh, 1909. So our history goes back a long time. Um, <clears throat> it has been a show place for us here. We moved here in 1992 from down on, off of Polk Street. I think at the time when that uh, took place, there were a lot of people that uh, were questioning it. I wasn't with the company at that time. But I, clearly, you can see that the leaders during that time made the right decision. This has a, been a great uh, area, a great community, a great place to be able to attract talent, which always helps. Uh, this is uh, the world's leading drill bit and research manufacturing center. We are the leaders in the world in this particular product line. Uh, last year, we had made the decision to consolidate all of our global tricone manufacturing capacity here in the woodlands, resulting in shutting down some of the operations we had elsewhere. Uh, this will create 130 manufacturing jobs by year end, and that will match up with the 750 employees that are already employed in this facility today. I think it's important to note that these 130 jobs are skilled jobs, machinists, etc. And if you look at it, it's also going to create other positions uh, in the areas of engineering. I think as Alan, Alan said, uh, you're only seeing the manufacturing side of this, the amount of engineering and science that goes in uh, in across the whole Baker High line community is quite impressive. We spend about $400 million a year in research and, and development part of it in this facility. 
Uh, as you saw on the tour, the decision to add the capacity has prompted us to reconfigure the floor space uh, that we have rather than trying to continue to build out. We try to become more efficient. We made a lot of great strides uh, in this area. Uh, there's some capital investment that's involved in this as well, about seven and a half million dollars. But I think the real key are the key people that we're bringing in, and that's the real investment that we're making. Um, this capacity, Woodlands plant, will have the capacity to, to produce. Alan said he doesn't like to give the numbers, so maybe I shouldn't say it. But this facility will produce about 35,000 drill bits a year, and that's uh, about twice with this new expansion, about twice the number that we produced here in 2009. Um, as you can imagine, maintaining our leadership in the roller cone bit technology requires a tremendous amount of proprietary expertise in mechanical engineering, metallurgy, computer simulation, laboratory testing, and dull bit analysis. And in addition to what you saw, there are about 150 men and women just working in the engineering field to make sure we maintain our lead in that area. Um, we think it's always, it's been our strategy that we think it's important that our engineering, our technology, our research that we've done remains very close to our manufacturing center. And if you would tour back through this area where all the engineers are, you can imagine how thrilled they are when they can walk down here and mess with something and how ticked off all these guys are when they see the engineers coming in and trying to tweak something. But we find that it really does benefit us with our engineering and manufacturing centers to be uh, closely uh, together and we apply this philosophy on a global basis. Um, once again, we very much thank all of you for attending today and I'll turn the podium back to Nelda. Thank you. Oops. Hope you didn't need that speech later. <laughs> Just stepped on it. <laughs> you know, uh, Baker Hughes is a perfect example of what makes the Woodlands and this part of Texas, but the Woodlands Township in particular, so unique. And it's the perfect example of why we are as successful as we are in being our own self-supporting, self-sustaining community and government. And that is because not only, of course, does this beautiful facility provide a part of our tax base, but it goes so much further than that. Jobs for the region, community activists and its employees, and of course the dedication of the organization itself. So that is the message that we preach quite often as we go into the communities, that the Woodlands quality of life is not simply based on parks, pathways, and people. That there's a lot of businesses that also have the people and the, and the ability to help sustain us. So uh, remember that as we go forward because there's a lot of uh, organizations and businesses in the Woodlands that do that. And Baker Hughes, you are absolutely uh, the perfect example. We appreciate every one, of the, every one of you that are being here today and certainly the expansion. Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, one of our elected officials who is our powerhouse at the state legislature. Um, excuse me, I'm going to introduce the one, Congressman Brady, first. Let me, let me mention that. I'm sorry, you, you thought you were going to speak next. He's, a power, he's not a powerhouse, no. <laughs> let me say this about Congressman Kevin Brady. I think it's very rare in a community that the vast majority of folks who live here and have lived here for any time at all can talk in the grocery store about Kevin and everyone knows they mean their congressman. That's pretty unusual. And that's because not only is he a great representative for us at the federal level, on, on the Ways and Means Committee, Baker Hughes knows what that means to energy and tax credits and R&D tax credits. It's, it's huge. But here today, right here in our community, everywhere you go that's a major uh, event, Kevin Brady is there. He's not in Washington today. He's in Washington all week long. He's in the community on the weekends. Goes back and forth. His family stays here. And the important part is he knows exactly what's going on in this district, which is why he's here for this celebration of, of the Baker Hughes to, um, event today. Congressman Kevin Brady, of course, uh, represents us so well in, at the federal level. But Congressman Brady, what we thank you for most is how involved you are in our community. Congressman Kevin Brady. Nell, thanks very much. And thank you for having me here today, uh, Mr. Deaton. This is our second to tour the facility. We were doing it two years ago as we were trying to educate other lawmakers and the press about the technology and the economic drivers of energy here in the United States and how we ought to be doing more of it. 
and uh, today's announcement sort of drives that point home even more so. Uh, this is a, an important day for our community and for our region uh, because this expansion by Baker Hughes means good paying jobs and a stronger economy. It's a testament to not only to their global leadership, uh, but to the business climate that our local leaders now at the township, our county commissioners have created at the state level, Senator Williams, where your work has created a business climate in Texas where companies can make these decisions. Baker Hughes is such a, an important part of our community region, Mr. Deaton. You're just a great corporate neighbor in so many ways. And to have this expansion not only means we have more neighbors, uh, but we have more involvement in our area as well. At a time when uh, many communities are looking for jobs, uh, uh, you have made a major investment decision in our community, and we thank you for it. The trick, though, is to make sure we see more of these announcements in the future. One of the challenges for Baker Hughes, indeed our country, is that uh, we are beginning to fall behind other countries in our business climate. America is still the largest manufacturing in the world. We manufacture 20%, 22% of all the world's manufactured products. China is a distant second at some 12% or so. But that may not stay that way, simply because we're starting to lose some of our competitive edges. At one time, not too long ago, America had one of the lowest tax rates on companies like this in the world. Today, others have taken our page from our book lowered their rates, we're now the second highest among our competitors. In 1981, recognized the importance of research and development here in America, we instituted a, an R&D tax credit that put us ahead of other countries, but they've now since caught up and in some cases surpassed us. So today we are unfortunately at a competitive disadvantage for R&D around the world. There are, we have a tax code that actually, America actually punishes double taxes companies like Baker Hughes when they compete to sell their products throughout the world. Other countries have done the opposite, have slimmed down that, and there's new proposals in Washington that would reinstate that double taxation. Again, what that means, it makes it harder for Baker Hughes to land the, con land the contract. It makes it harder for us to keep these jobs here in the woodlands. The truth is, the world has changed. It's no longer enough to simply buy American. We have to sell American. We have to sell our American drill bits in every globe, corner of this globe every day competing against uh, uh, first-rate uh, competitors. And we see proposals in Washington to drive taxes up on energy production, those are your customers, and drive that production offshore out of America. All these proposals, my worry is that all these proposals could take America from first to worst in business climate, we have to do just the opposite. We're going to take Mr. Deaton, not only do we appreciate this global decision to locate and expand jobs in the woodlands, but it's, we're going to tell this story in Washington about why we need to do more of that and create a business climate that allows these decisions each and every day in our region in this community. Thank you for your investment in our region. Thank you for the jobs you're creating. As I said, we do have a powerhouse on the federal level, but we also have one on the state level. Our Senator, Tommy Williams, who's been a great, uh, fan of, a great fan for the Woodlands, but not only just the Woodlands, all of his district in this part of Texas, uh, in the state legislature, in the Texas legislature. Not an easy place to be sometimes every other year, um, but Tommy Williams has been a champion, not only of folks like Baker Hughes, but all of the businesses in this area. And I'll introduce him now to say a few words, Senator Tommy Thank Williams. You. Thank you. Thank you, Nelda and Chad. Thank you for locating these jobs uh, here in our community. We are so proud uh, to have a global leader like uh, Baker Hughes located here, and the fact that you've chosen to expand your facility here means uh, the world to us. And uh, as Congressman Brady's already said, you know, I think our job at the state level is, is to stay out of, our, out of your way. We understand that you create the jobs. We don't create jobs in state or federal government. Uh, Congressman Brady and I both understand that. But rather, it's our role to try to provide the business climate. And here in Texas, uh, we've worked very hard 
uh, over the last decade plus to try to provide the legal environment, the tax environment, and the educated workforce that will encourage businesses to locate uh, their facilities here in Texas. And um, these are the fruits of that labor, and it means the world to me. And this is, when I see things like this happen, particularly when they're in my district, I like them anywhere in Texas, but particularly when they're so close to home, this is what it's uh, all about for me uh, serving in the legislature, is seeing uh, the kind of growth that this uh, represents and what it means to families, jobs that you can really raise your family and have a career. And we're so proud to have you here. Thank you for your decision. Thank you, Senator, and you, Congressman. Again, it's great to have both of you here. Uh, Baker Hughes, uh, Mr. Deaton, your folks have been very, very hospitable this morning, and we really appreciate that. Now, I know there's quite a bit of media here and folks that may have some question and answers. We're going to open it to a question and answer period, none of the answers which I will know. So if you will come forward and uh, we'll take a, or anyone else that's going to do a question and answer session, we'll take um, questions if any of the press has some. Let me, let me come back that way, okay? Two parts for you, sir. First of all, I'd like you to talk a little bit about um, what an expansion like this really means. One of the gentlemen touched on it for the families that are living here in the Woodlands, for your district specifically, but also in juxtaposition. I'd like to get your thoughts on what you think with Continental and United proposing the merger and people being nervous about us losing jobs on that. That one might work. I'm not sure. Um, next question. No, 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 let's go. Um, look, this is critical for our region it, it, because I'll tell you, we're, uh, as America recovers from this recession, we're looking for those corporate decisions, those global decisions that say we are still a good place to invest. And in our region, what it says is, is that our, our leaders are doing the right thing, creating the right environment. And for families, this is important not only for those who will take these new jobs, but I think it's a confirmation to the workers of Baker Hughes who have jobs today who understand there are real decisions to expand and make a commitment to this facility. So I think it is important for a number of families in the area. And also, manufacturing spins off so many other jobs within the region. I mean, it really is just one of the best types of jobs we can create. So, we're going to see not only engineering and research jobs as a result of this, we're going to see other jobs at the mall, uh, from suppliers to people hauling these drill bits uh, up and down the line. So it's very important to our people. You know, I, I'm not a real big fan of the merger between Continental and United. And my biggest worry is that the quality of Continental could go down. They've made remark they've gone from worst to worst in both quality and custom customer service one of our great corporate citizens in the Houston region. I don't want that headquarters relocated to Chicago. I think it's a bad business decision. I think it's a huge loss for our region. And I'm going to join with Mayor Parker, Great Houston Partnership, and Judge Ed Emmett to do everything we can to tie us to try to make that argument to keep them here. I know we have a lot of neighbors here in the Woodlands, South Montgomery County. I think we've got them in favor of the works for Continental. Uh, in our neighborhoods, for the most part, uh, they are uh, worried about this decision. Um, I recognize uh, that it is tough for standalone airlines to make it in this global marketplace. I understand you have to make business decisions on how to best structure to be able to compete, but I want that structure to be headquartered here at Houston. I think it will be best for the merger of Did that answer your question? Are there any other questions? There's one here. Mr. So the question was that uh, you heard that BP has been reaching out to, to other oil companies to, for support or help in terms of trying to solve the problem offshore and as we in the service sector, an example, be, uh, 
Baker Hughes been asked to uh, participate or get involved? Uh, yes, I, I would imagine they are. Uh, you know, one thing that uh, problems like this uh, happens in our industry, nobody takes it on themselves. They're looking for every bit of expertise and help that they can. The number one priority, I think, without a doubt, from BP is to get this well plugged and then to determine what took place and there'll be a full investigation. The uh, client we work with for a long time, they take this very, very seriously. As far as the service sector being involved, yes, uh, you know, there's talk of some directional wells. To directionally drill down and intercept that well bore at 18,000 feet, and then to what they call dynamically kill the well. Uh, we're involved in that. Uh, they could use uh, if one of the rigs that are looking to go in there, we would uh, possibly be on that. Uh, as will some of our other competitors, possibly, because you know, there's a couple rigs in order to do it. You know, I think it's very important that we look at this, and, and yes, this is a bit of a major problem. But I think we have to keep everything context here and also remember that we've been drilling wells, this industry has been drilling wells in the Gulf of Mexico for dozens and dozens of years. And uh, it is becoming more technically challenging as we have to go around the world to find more hydrocarbon to feed the global economy, including the U.S. economy. So I, I, I hope that we all look at this and realize, well, yes, we've got to get it corrected as an industry, but we've got to learn from it and then continue to move forward. We have one more question, or one more question, sure. Way in the back. Go ahead. Well, the timing, you, you, if I understood the question, how bad is the timing when a month ago or wherever the president talked about opening up some new areas, you know, this has happened, and now talking about not drilling in those new areas. You know, I, we all saw that this morning, that all new drilling would, would stop. I, I think we have to understand what that means. Does that mean no new drilling in these new areas? Uh, that was probably five years away in these new areas anyway, by the time you did the seismic and, and everything. If it means stop all drilling, period, offshore, then that's a, you know, that's a different issue. That's a, that's a significant Does it issue. Does affect your growth here, though, your manufacturing here? Uh, if he's talking about the five-year future areas and not allowing anything to drill in that area, that's not going to stop us here because I know the industry will move forward, get this solved, and figure out what happened and move forward with it. If it was to stop all drilling in the Gulf of Mexico, then you know that's a different that's a different story. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, we're manufacturing bits here for global use. In 95 countries where we operate, a lot of these bits will be used in around the world: in India, China, Latin America, you name it. So <clears throat> it could have an effect. Gulf of Mexico we we'll still build a lot of bits for on, on land U.S. I think it's just too early. We need to hear what the announcement was this morning and understand it before we, we jump to any conclusion. Right back. Do you want to comment that? You know, uh, we do not need to find out what went wrong in BP and prevent it from occurring again. I think if the decision is to stop drilling until we do that, you know, I think that's an overreaction. Just like with Toyota, when they discovered the defects, they didn't stop the production of all cars in America. They focused on that vehicle, that model, and what went wrong to stop it. I think it'd be a mistake to stop oil and gas production, or even because our companies make such long-term decisions, to create more uncertainty in what's already a pretty uncertain market for energy in the United States, I think would have I think, a serious economic impact. Let's focus on that rate, that problem, let's find a solution, and then, if it's appropriate, you know, apply it industry-wide and make it safer. But the truth is, energy exploration production uh, is not just environmentally friendly, technologically so advanced, this doesn't happen anymore. You know, this just doesn't happen. And we ought not stop jobs, discourage more investment because of this incident. Let's solve this one and then determine if there's a broader issue. All right. That concludes our agenda this morning. Again, thank you to Senator Williams and Congressman Brady. Keep up the good work, Mr. David. It's these guys here. Doing all and the work all of you. Thank you so much. <laughs>